Good evening, everyone. Um, it's March 14th, 2023, and this is the CEC 15 business meeting. I am Camille Casaretti, the president of CEC 15, and I'm going to hand the floor over to Antonia Ferraro, our secretary. Hi, everybody. Um, <clears throat> before uh, I call the roll, I would like to offer the interpreters an opportunity to introduce themselves. Uh, let's have the Spanish interpretation line. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, the following message will be in Spanish. Um, Stephanie and Miguel are your interpreters, Spanish interpreters tonight. Uh, por favor, en la línea de conferencia en español, es el número siguiente, 347-966-4100. Uno cuatro y ingresa la clave ocho cinco cero cinco nueve 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 tres cero seguido de la tecla numeral. La información está en el chat para su conveniencia. Por favor, se le solicita que mantengan el micrófono de su celular y de la computadora apagados para evitar la interferencia de sonido. Muchas gracias. And could we have the Mandarin interpreter introduce themselves? Uh,大家好,我的名字叫做那问题,我的那个合作伙伴的名字叫做Ziparker,然后呢,我的这个合作伙伴的名字叫做Ziparker,然后呢,要按住ID号,578-99797-9712,然后呢,几号,非常感
All right. All right. So we have uh, three minutes tonight to um, look over. Uh, we have the first one from January 31st calendar meeting. And we have February 16th business meeting and February 28th calendar meeting. Uh, has everybody had an opportunity to look over January 31st calendar meeting minutes? And does anybody have any edits they would like to make? Uh, would anybody like to motion to approve the minutes? I motion to approve the minutes. I second. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any objections to approving these minutes? Okay, the, the uh, minutes for January uh, 31st have been adopted then. Um, please uh, go on and look at February 16th minutes. Does anybody have any questions, concerns, comments about February 16th business meeting minutes? All right, could I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. Okay, thank you, Joe. Um, does anybody object to the minutes? All right, those minutes have been adopted for February 16th. Let's go on to February 20, excuse me. Um, let's go on to February 28th calendar meeting minutes. Uh, does anybody have any edits to those minutes? Do I have a motion? Is there a motion to approve February 28th minutes? Motion to approve February 28th. Okay, thank you so much, Nancy. Does anybody have any objections to these minutes? Then the minutes are adopted. Uh, and before I go on to district updates, I will just update the roll call. I just saw Alfred join us. Alfred, are you present? I am. Okay, great. Um, all right, wonderful. Uh, Camille, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Antonia, and welcome everyone. We're so happy to have you here with us tonight for this business meeting. I'm just gonna give a number of updates. So Antonia and I went to Albany yesterday. We met with Senators Liu, Senator Mayer, Senator Chu, Senator Parker, and Gunardis. We also met with Assembly Member Benedetto's staff and we discussed public school advocacy that so we talked about maintaining charter cap, um, giving New York City transition aid, ending charter school co-locations, creating more transparency and accountability in charter school reporting, ending rental reimbursements, amending the open meetings law, and um, a list of other legislative issues that we support, like universal child care, expanded after school programming, funding for asylum seekers. Um, funding for the school governance study to be conducted by the commissioner, Betty Rosa um, of the New York State Education Department and funding for universal meals in schools. Antonia, did you wanna add, add anything else? 
Sure. We had a lot of nice conversations when we were up there yesterday. Um, Senator Liu and Mayor informed us that the Senate has no intention of lifting the regional charter cap or reissuing zombie charters. They will not add those items to their one house bill. Of course, we don't know what happens after that. Um, additionally, Senator Mayer indicated that they intended to include funding for the school governance study. Um, so that's nice to hear. Um, that is the study, by the way, that seeks to develop a more democratic form of school governance for New York City, which currently has um, mayoral control. Also, in speaking with various legislators, yeah. there was an interest in funding expanded after school programs, but uh, no specifics. Uh, this is something that I have worked on separately with various members of the community and PTA parents on. So maybe there's an opportunity to do further advocacy on after school programming uh, with our legislators. Um, unfortunately, I do have to report that transitional aid is, is not something that they are willing to address without the direct advocacy of Mayor Adams. Um, the presidents of CEC 16 and 17 and I had a meeting with Deputy Chancellor Kanita Lloyd and Mark Traeger last week to advocate for transitional aid. As we've discussed in prior meetings, New York City is eligible for hundreds of millions of dollars per year to compensate for enrollment loss due to charter schools, but Mayor Adams must ask the Senate for it. We also discussed um, in Albany, that is, we discussed the need for uh, state funds for newly arrived asylum seekers and migrant students. Um, and they, um, those conversations, through those conversations, we learned that uh, Mayor Adams is mostly focused on obtaining federal aid, but it seems that the state could assist as well if asked for that funding. So if anyone out there is listening, please encourage the mayor to ask the state for both transitional aid and for aid for asylum seekers. We have over 5,500 newly enrolled migrant students in New York City, and this number will continue to grow. And the bottom line is that New York City schools need all the support they can get from all available sources. So that's my little addition to your report, Camille. Thank you for letting me uh, say something. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so other things that are in the works. Um, I wanna follow up on something that we discussed in our last meeting regarding um, adding a possible restart academy in District 15. So Superintendent Alvarez had you know, heard our request and has been in conversations with Superintendent Esperance, um, who is the person leading the District 79 Council um, about a new space for students who are recovering from substance abuse. So they're working together to find a location for a program um, that could exist in our district. And he reported that Superintendent Esperance is fully on board. So that's really exciting. Um, I just wanna elevate issues with drug and substance abuse that are happening, not just in District 15, but all over the city and remind families to review the behavioral expectations um, with their children. The students might think that vaping in the bathroom and sharing vape is harmless, but actually constitutes distribution of drugs and is a level five infraction. So please talk to your children about drug and alcohol abuse. Um, like our schools are doing what they can and we need parents to reinforce these messages at home as well. Um, just um, 
to add that charter schools do not actually follow the DOE rules around suspension. So if you're having issues with suspension at your charter school, you can file a complaint and I'll drop, I'll drop all these links in the chat um, when I finish talking. So tomorrow morning, there's a New York City Council education hearing, uh, March 15th at 9 a.m. And the City Council, Rita Joseph, um, is going to be hearing feedback on the education budget. Later in this meeting, we're going to be reviewing a resolution on the budget that asks for DOE to assure that $90 million in fair student funding funds um, provided to schools with high concentration of homeless students and poor living in poverty will not cause other schools to be cut by that same amount. So we want to make sure that's additional and not just like transfer of funds. In addition, we are asking for clarity and reporting that budget cuts from last year are restored and that the capital plan be expanded to meet class size mandates. There's um, going to be another meeting at the end of this month, an update on the Gowanus neighborhood rezoning. So city council voted to adopt the Gowanus neighborhood plan on November 23rd of this past year. The plan aims to support community goals, such as cleanup of the Gowanus Canal um, and the surrounding areas, creating permanently affordable housing and diverse job opportunities and building and supporting schools, parks, and other community resources and infrastructure. Um, the plan was developed with community members and officials over the past four years. There's going to be a community meeting at PS32 on Wednesday, March 29th at 6 p.m. And uh, Council Member Hanif is going to be hosting this public forum. There will be speakers and uh, Q&A. So please plan to attend either in person or via Zoom. Um, our public advocacy has actually allowed for a $250 million capital improvement commitment um, towards the NYCHA residences in Gowanus. This was not part of the original package. And many members of the community, including myself um, and others here on this call, were advocating for money to be um, allocated to make sure that NYCHA was not ignored in the Juanus neighborhood rezoning because they have been conveniently cut out of the map. So um, I hope that the 250 million is going to happen. I think we really need to pay attention to this and make sure that people are held accountable and that doesn't just sort of disappear. So just please keep that on your radar. Um, we had a number of parents reach out to us about special education services lately, um, trying to get IEPs. And so there's a lot of information on the DOE website. I'll drop that in the chat um, in a minute. Uh, a couple more things. The CCEC candidate forums are happening now. So please try to attend forums. Um, you can meet the candidates running for CEC 15 and other, other citywide councils. The uh, CEC 15 candidate forum is going to be held on Monday, March 27th at 6 p.m. You can register on the DOE website and of course an interpretation will be provided. I'll drop a link to the um, candidate statements for District 15 in the chat. Um, and uh, tonight at the same time as our meeting, unfortunately, um, Starting at 7.30, there is a virtual teach-in on New York State grade three to eight tests and testing refusal. Um, if you're able to jump on that call, you can hear from parents, educators, and former New York City school principal and current congressperson, Jamal Bowman, about New York State testing and your right to opt out. And if you can't be the meeting tonight, a video is going to be shared later and we'll be happy to um, send that out as soon as we have the link to it. We save the date for our next CEC meeting on March 28th. We are gonna have uh, the Office of District Planning 
presenting updates on the new school buildings that are anticipated to open in September of 2024. So not September, but next. So I'm just gonna start talking about what um, those spaces are gonna look like and how they're gonna be used. And then lastly, tomorrow night at 6.30, there is going to be a District 15 Superintendent Town Hall. Um, I've noticed that a lot of the um, advertisements, so to speak, that went out, don't have the link working. And so we will try to share that with the public tomorrow as soon as possible. Um, that is the end of my report. And so if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer. And if not, we can just move on to, I'll hand the floor back. I'm sorry, you cut out, Camille. I couldn't hear you. Were you saying you're handing the floor back to me? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make um, a motion to amend the agenda. The next agenda item, the resolution to vote on the class size matters resolution. We read that resolution both at the business meeting and calendar meetings in uh, in February, and we had a pretty lengthy presentation by Lainey Hameson. So I am asking you all if we can skip reading it in its entirety a third time. And I would just propose that we offer time to any more comments from both the public or CC members, and then just simply follow it up with a council vote. Um, so if, do I guess I would have to uh, formally uh, make a motion to skip the reading of that a second uh, hold on let me write this down uh, who who was it that seconded tia okay All right, and then I guess I'll I'll do the um, the roll call vote. Um, okay, Camille, are you in favor of just going on to public comments for that resolution? That's fine with me. Okay, uh, I approve. Tia, approve. Okay. Uh, Vincent Liu is absent. Nana Poku Ajakum. Approve. Alfred DeAngelis? Approve. Joseph Alexander? Approve. Yvonne Bonda? Approve. It's fine. Nancy Randall? Approve. Vanessa Gonzalez Yuoka? I approve. And Nakia Muhasa Brown? Approve. Okay, so I will turn it over to the parliamentarian to just take comments. Thank you. Um, uh, please uh, raise your hand in the chat or interpreters. If you have anyone on the chat lines that have a question or comment, please uh, have the interpreter raise their hand. Uh, final call for public comments or questions. Please check the interpretation line. Yes, I, did. I didn't hear any comments on the Spanish line. I'm sorry. So there's no question on the Spanish line. Okay, I see no hands from. And, and then there is no comment from Bengali line, too. Thank you. Uh, there is no question on the Mandarin line as well. Great, thank you. All right, uh, for CEC comments or questions, I know that we've read this a number of times now. Let anything else come up? Okay, uh, I have no questions or comments myself, so I hand it back over to you, Antonia. 
Okay. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion to uh, approve this resolution or vote on this resolution? Make a motion to vote. Okay. Who, who was that? Who, who Nakia. Me, Nakia. Um, okay, and who seconded? Nancy. All right, Camille, how do you vote? I approve. Okay, um, Antonia Ferraro, yes, I approve of this resolution. Uh, Tia Shelsky? Approve. Vincent Lewis, absent. Nana Poku Ajakum? Yes, I approve. Alfred Diangenes? I'm against it. Okay. Uh, Joseph Alexander? I approve. Yvonne Banda? Approve. Nancy Randall? Approve. Vanessa Gonzalez, Yoka? I approve. And Nakia Muhasa Brown? Approve. All right. So the mo uh, the resolution uh, has been passed. All right, um, Camille, how do you want to proceed? Camille, do you want me to just introduce the next I'm resolution? Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. Why don't you do that? Or, you know, if you don't want to read all of them, we can share. So, okay. Why don't you go ahead and still kind all of right. things in the chat? Okay. All right. So, this, I have not fully uh, digested this resolution. It came from the Citywide Council on Special Ed. This is the first time we're sort of looking at this resolution. Uh, we're not voting on either of these resolutions tonight. So it is a resolution to have the PEP vote on the fair student funding formula prior to the uh, school year 2023-24 budget vote. So whereas Two New York City parents and two teachers filed a lawsuit Monday, July 18th, 2022, seeking to overturn the city council's approval of the city budget, which cuts hundreds of millions of dollars from school budgets for this upcoming academic year. The, whereas the lawsuit filed against New York City, the Education Department, and Schools Chancellor David Banks claims that city officials failed to follow the proper protocols before elected officials voted on the final budget, which took effect July 1. Whereas the plaintiffs also want a temporary restraining order on implementation of the budget cuts and city schools funded at the same levels as last fiscal year. Whereas the lawsuit claims that the city skirted proper protocols by failing to allow the Panel for Education Policy or PEP a largely mayoral appointed board that approves major contracts and policies to approve the department's estimated budget before it went in went to city council for a final vote whereas chancellor banks created a new fair student funding task force composed of representatives from the CSA, UFT, elected officials, PEP members, CCEC members, education advocacy organizations, and students which release recommendations on November 4, which released recommendations on November 4th, 2022. Whereas the chancellor announced recommendations made by the Fair Student Funding Task Force to the existing formula in an effort to address the existing inequities 
in the current fund funding formula, whereas the chancellor has also accepted additional recommendations from the working group, which do not directly impact fair student funding weights. Shanice, could you go on to the next page? Thank you. Whereas in early spring of 2022, the Panel for Education Policy, PEP, surprised the Adams administration by voting to reject the fair student funding formula, sorry, fair student funding allocations for the 2022-23 school year. PEP members voting against the fair student funding uh, allocation cited more than a decade of school short funding and the perceived inadequacies of numerous FSF funding categories. Whereas the need to reevaluate the FSF formula might never have been revealed had the PEP not temporarily rejected the 2022-23 FSF allocation. Whereas school budget cuts have resulted in the accessing of teachers and elimination of enrichment programs such as art and music, vacancies in related service providers and special education instructors will be left unfilled and students who need special education supports will have their IEPs violated and continue to fall behind. Whereas with the influx of asylum seekers coming to our city school to our city schools will require additional funding to support this special population. In addition to the McKinney-Vento funding set aside to support students in temporary housing. Whereas it would only make sense in an effort to avoid any delay in planning for school year 2023-24 to have a firm grasp of what FSF will look like prior to a vote on the budget. Therefore, be it resolved that CEC 15 demands that Chancellor Banks ask the PEP to vote on the fair student funding formula prior to the vote on the school year 2023-24 budget. Be it also resolved that CEC 15 recommends the FSF task force be allowed to continue their work and be allowed to develop policy implementation guidelines and accountability measures after the vote has occurred, no matter the outcome. So that, um, that I'll turn it over to the parliamentarian for comments then. Oh, wait, we're not going to comments. Are we, Camille? I'm sorry. I sort of just no, did that. I, I sort of did that reflexively. Yeah, I don't think we've read it yet. Okay. Um, do we want to do any CEC comments in case there's, um, you know, something that needs to be discussed before we move to the next item. Anybody have a question or a comment? Yeah. Um, so then I guess let's move on to the next. I, I actually item. have a question on that one. What did, whether they actually, they're asking the chancellor to, to allow a panel to vote on the formula that that's part of the lawsuit? Um, it sounds like they're addressing the conflict of interest that the mayor uh, appoints a number of people on the PEP, is, isn't that? So I think that the, it, it's a little confused. The, the resolution goes back in time and it it uh, goes back to last summer when there was a lawsuit um, filed. And it just sort of takes you through the history 
of how this task force was um, developed to uh, address the fair student funding weights, which have now been um, uh, amended. And so I think it's it's asking that the PEP vote on that new fair student funding formula before they vote on an actual budget. So I guess those amendments to the fair student funding formula are not approved yet or not final right yeah no you know and i mean just the the fact that antonia the way you're explaining to us now um that um in that explanation is a lot of assumptions so what are we actually voting on are we voting on assumptions or what are we i mean i really don't know what they're asking for uh can i have a shot at this sure. I, I vote yes to that <laughs> uh, uh, just um my understanding is that the um the purpose is to address um the fact that the city council passed a budget um that um you know reduced a lot of funding for new york city public schools and um so uh, the resolution is to um, have the PEP, uh, in other words, the New York City Department of Education, um, describe precisely uh, what our budget is before the city council votes to approve it, essentially. So that it's not just some mysterious, you know, so that the the city can't say, well, um, our budget has been cut and therefore we're going to cut X, Y, Z programs. We will already know what the city intends to be the education budget before the city council you know, official makes it official. So in other words, the PEP is what officially um, determines what the the city's, the chancellor and therefore the mayor's idea of what the budget should be. And then the city council approves the entire city budget, which includes that education budget proposal from the PEP which I think is great. I think this is a great resolution if if I'm understanding it correctly. Uh, I, if that's what it, if that's what, that's not what it says in this resolution. This resolution is about a formula and wait and them voting on a formula beforehand. Am, am I wrong about that? You're right. You're right. They haven't, <laughs> right. <laughs> they haven't identified the specific weights Remember, we had that presentation last week and they said, well, we've now added a weight for students in temporary housing, but they, and a few other weights, but we they haven't said how much those weights are yet. And so they um, this resolution is asking that the PEP be able to vote to approve those weights before they even vote on the budget. But isn't there aren't the weights state a state thing? The chancellor has made some changes to those weights. Okay. So the state gives them fair student funding proportions and then the chancellor can change. Apparently. Them. Okay. <laughs> no, I think what happens is the state gives us a specific dollar amount. And then the fair student funding weights are um, set based on that total pool of money. So if we have like five million one year and six million in another year, the weight of one changes. Well, that's even better. Um, that's great that um, 
that but even even our, our superintendent at the last meeting was saying that he added weight to his formula for certain students um that would affect district 15 budget so who's added so what formula is this a state a citywide formula that the that the superintendent then has to follow as well or is he going to further adjust the weights in the formula for his own uh plans or what i don't think alvarez can do that i think it's yeah, a, i think they're citywide weights that. Right. And like he was saying that he didn't have the specific District 15 um, budget numbers to share with us and that he would show them to us if we asked. So I did ask and waiting to see that. Um, but I believe there's a way to do it just going by each school's web page to see um, what the enrollment numbers currently are that's a lot of work and complicated but yeah the superintendent has to follow the city formula should we maybe bring on the people who wrote the resolution to talk about it I think sure that's a good idea if we could do that because it, mm -hmm. it's pretty yeah, we could do that. yeah. So should we just move on to the next resolution then? Yeah, I'm just going to make a note to uh, contact uh, contact us. CSA. Who submitted that? Uh, Special Ed Council. Okay, yeah. So Janice, are you able to share the screen for the next resolution? Yeah, so I just have to move to Microsoft Teams. So this, um, This resolution uh, is to urge the PEP and the city council to restore school budget cuts that were made last year and expand the capital plan to be able to meet the benchmarks in the new class size law. So I will just go ahead and read this. And this was most recently revised on March 10th, 2023. Whereas this year, most school budgets were cut by large amounts, with the city comptroller estimating that 77% of schools had their fair student funding cut by $469 million. Whereas of January 13, 2023, 86% of schools experienced cuts to their entire Galaxy budget totaling 893 million compared to last year's averaging about 655,000 655, each. Whereas after they voted to approve the budget last June, many city council members said they were caught unaware with the severity of the budget cuts. Whereas these budget cuts led to class size increases this year, as well as the loss of many critical programs. Whereas after they learned of the extent of these cuts, many council, city council members said they regretted having voted for the budget and demanded that they be allowed to take a revote. As the mayor refused to allow a revote to occur. Whereas the mayor's preliminary budget for next year cuts another $800 million from the DOE budget in addition to a $176 million mid-year cut. Whereas it is unclear if the adopted changes in the fair student funding formula that are supposed to send an additional $90 million to schools with a high number of homeless students and or students in poverty will cause other school budgets to be cut by that same amount. Whereas New York City 
public schools have already lost more than 4,000 full-time K-12 teachers since the fiscal year 2019, according to DOE headcount data posted on the New York City Council website. Whereas DOE is slated to receive an additional $568 million in state foundation aid for the next year, the final payment in three-year phase in of about $1.3 billion resulting from the C4E lawsuit meant to provide New York City students with the right to a sound basic education, including smaller classes. Whereas starting next fall, the DOE is supposed to start lowering class size according to a new state law with far smaller class size cap to be required of all schools over the next five years. Whereas this phase in process will require a significantly more funding, will require significantly more funding for space and staffing. Whereas the need to create additional classroom space, especially urgent since it can take up to five years or more to build and or expand school facilities. Whereas despite this fact, the proposed February 2023 amendment to the five-year capital plan slashes funding for new school capacity by $2.3 billion and actual, and actual school seats to be built over 21,038% compared to the plan adopted in June 2021 with no mention of the need to ensure sufficient space to lower class size. Whereas DOE has posted a brief one-page summary of the fiscal year 2024 estimated budget in preparation for a vote by the panel on education policy on March 22, 2023. Whereas Education Law 2590-G um, Section 5 of the State Education Law requires that all estimates submitted by the Chancellor shall be prepared in the manner prescribed by the New York City Charter for submission of departmental estimates. And the level of detail in this one-page summary does not comply with this prescription. It resolved that the DOE should clarify that the additional $90 million in fair student funding provides to, provided to schools with a high concentration of homeless students and or in poverty will not cause other schools to be cut by that same amount. It resolved that the information provided to the panel and the public should include far more detail, including areas of proposed cuts and units of appropriation, including estimates showing how much schools will be funded at next year compared to this year to have a clear understanding of any potential reductions in school budget amounts. It resolved that we urge the panel for education policy and the city council not to approve any DOE budget that doesn't fully restore the cuts made to schools last year. It resolved that funding for new capacity in the city plan should be expanded rather than cut to ensure sufficient space for all schools to meet the class size capped in the new state law. Questions, thoughts? Joe, I'll hand it over to you. All right, thank you. Uh, we're just doing CEC comments and questions tonight, correct? Um, yeah, so any any uh, CEC member have a comment or question on this? Nancy? Sorry. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it's really important for, are we, is the intention to not vote on this tonight, Camille? That's the intention. Um, it's really, it's, the PEP is meeting on March 22nd. So if we were to pass this resolution, we would need to do it before the PEP meets on March 22nd. Um, Cause otherwise- Are we in compliance with bylaws? Could somebody check? No, I'm not- Yeah, our bylaws expert. I, I'm not saying, I don't know if we can or not vote on it tonight, but I do know that if we don't vote on it before March 22nd, then there's, this is, we're not doing anything, basically. Um, and after seeing what happened last year with the mayor cutting so much funding to schools and to see it about to happen again when 
so much effort has been put into fighting that from happening. We were pushing to restore the cuts and instead we're, the cuts are getting deeper. Um, and it just, I guess I'm just expressing my complete dismay at the situation that we're in. Do, do we know when this was uploaded on the website? Is that a factor, right? What I do know is that the fair student funding formula information and the new budget were just released. I believe it was two weeks ago and um, the PEP is voting next week. So yet again, no. the mayor did not give enough time for there to be enough back and forth about the budget um, before the PEP must vote on the budget. Yes, Antonio. So Nancy, are you saying we have to vote on both of these resolutions tonight? On the fair student funding weights or just this one on the budget cuts? I mean, we don't, if we don't vote on these resolutions, then we're just kind of saying once we do vote on them that we would have supported them in hindsight, but ultimately, mm -hmm. We can only be proactive if we vote on them before the PEP votes. We're only supporting the PEP members, including our own Brooklyn appointee who is in support of there not being budget cuts, who was against budget cuts. We can only support them if we vote before March 22nd on these resolutions. Mm -hmm. Okay, can, can you read this, Tia? Sure, okay. Um, from the bylaws, uh, resolutions may be placed on the agenda by a vote of six council members um, or three members, blah, 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 or a member of the council at any time, provided that one, he, she, shall have delivered a copy thereof to the president and the administrative assistant before the start of the calendar meeting. Two, such addition is consented to by a vote of six council members. And three, copies thereof are distributed to each council member prior to the call to order. I mean, I guess the copies weren't just distributed prior to the call to order. Um, no, I mean, we shared it with the public. So that's the copy being distributed. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that would be my, I was just making sure, like as long as we don't have like a 48 hour notice like we do with meetings or whatever, then I would, I would make, I make a motion that we vote to, add this to the meeting for a vote. I second. Okay, hold on. I need to go back and notate all this. Okay. Thanks, Tia, for looking that up. Sure. Doesn't it say calendar meeting, though, guys? I hate to be. Does it? Okay, let's look. <laughs> it does. Can we just, uh, uh, in the past, we've had uh, emergency meetings, have we not? Uh, can't we, we just meet? Yeah a week from tonight or Thursday or something to, to, to vote? I think that's reasonable too. Yeah, because one of the things that I just want to, from here, the resolution is I'm a bit confused about, you know, how, where this is, you know, the conclusion of, of what they're really looking for, like the other resolution. So I think when it started out, it sounded more like we're trying to restore the budget from last year, but going along, it seems like, there's also going to be budget cut for this year and there's going to be a shortfall. Um, so like, what are we, we asking for? Is it because of the budget for this year is going to get cut? So we need to make sure it doesn't get cut. And in addition to that, restore what was lost from last year. Um, I just want to make sure to understand if this, uh, this is like based on two different asks that we have. Um, just because I'm a bit confused about how, how that, this is written.
I think it makes sense to also ask the writer of this resolution to um, Nicole, what do you think? Did you just say my name? I did. I was saying oh, I was okay. suggesting no, no, no. that we have um, the writer of the resolution come to speak with us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. It, so then there seems to be an appetite for scheduling a special session um, prior to the twentieth. Um, and is there any way that we can maybe address the questions to them so that on that day it's not like they're trying to come and look for answers, right? Um, and because you know, if we schedule, we want that to be a fruitful meeting where, if you know, we can maybe pose the questions ahead of time, and they can have some of these. I, mean, I like the idea of the whole resolution, but it's just that it's just not pinpoint to me what the ask is. So I don't think they can answer that if they do show up without knowing some of the questions that we have. I. Uh, uh, Nancy, are you sure that that pet meeting isn't tomorrow? Oh, I thought it was March 22nd. I believe it's tomorrow. Oh, no. It says March 22nd in the document. The, Do you mind if I date, take a the moment? The date was to changing. Google? The date was changed. Yeah. Do you mind if I take a moment to Google this? <laughs> Oh yeah, look at, oh, oh, the pet meeting originally scheduled for March 15th was postponed to April 18th. That's new. Rescheduled. It was rescheduled, yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. The pet meeting originally scheduled for March 15th was postponed to April 18th. Please click above to, okay. Okay, okay. so I'll then. We That's can great. just do this uh, at the next meeting. <laughs> okay, great. Plan to have the author present. Yes, I will ask both of the authors. And, okay. and so our next meeting is March 28th, and that's in person at PS 676 in Red Hook. Oh, we're going back to in person. Yeah, because we only were allowed to do this until March 21st. Got it. Okay. So, Anthony, are you good? Or I uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm just I will contact both of the authors of these resolutions and ask them to come to our next regularly scheduled calendar meeting. Okay, cool. So then we're getting close to the end of the agenda. The next item is the um, bylaws amendment on hybrid meetings, which we discussed ad nauseum. Um, I guess per the agenda, this is our fourth review. Yeah, can I hand it over to you? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't do anything uh, on it. I haven't worked on it at all. Sorry. So we left it as we were going to try to detail what the um, acceptable absences were going to be. Is that where we were? Right. Yeah. I took detailed notes and I don't even have the notes in front of me right now. Um, I, I think we were wondering what an emergency was and what qualified as an emergency and how many of them. I think that's one of the things that I have in my notes. But... Yeah, I did take detailed notes. I just, I really, um, really was not able to get to them. Should we um, have like a bylaws meeting and then we can just sort of like hash it out? I mean, I feel like we did hash it out. It's just a matter of writing it. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, are you able to do it after this meeting? Um, okay, when is our next calendar meeting? 
It's on the 28th. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, I have like a deadline this Friday that I'm trying okay. to hit and that is like all I'm doing right now. But um, yes, yes. Okay, so we'll check in on Monday then. Okay. After your deadline. Yes. And I have detailed cool. notes. We hashed it out. I feel like it was, I think we all, you know, came to, um, were in agreement, so. Okay, cool. I thought there was a Google Doc that was supposed to go around or something with. Um, yeah, but, um, I mean, uh, yeah, I haven't started one. Um, my notes need to go into the Google, but you know, I will okay. create a Duke Google Doc of the draft. So, um, everyone will be able to see. So this that's being shared on the screen, do we all have access to that? Because I think I had tried and I did not have access. Um, is this the one, let's see. I can't really see it. Um, yeah, I had done a draft where I had replaced, you know, the public body uh, text with CEC 15 and stuff. Um, but I do believe everyone has, has access to both because I do think that I shared both at some point. Right, but not, not editable. Oh, uh, correct. Could yeah. you make like Antonia and I editors then? Sure. Okay, cool. Um, all right, great. So, uh, Next item on the agenda is new business. Does anybody have any new business? I just have a question. Does anyone know like a hard date of when like 3K and middle school, I've heard high school, but 3K and middle school placements are being announced. I've, I've had that come up with parents. Um, is anybody on the call that knows anything about when the dates might be happening i'd have to look into it i probably have an email um yeah i've i've like looked on the website it's like really hard to find so so well, you're saying the high three school K? offers are mutually early yeah 3k pre-k and middle school like so it says you have to submit your application for 3k and pre-k uh, by the end of the day, Monday, March 13th, which was yesterday. Right. Okay, that's okay. That's the, but you want to know when, when they, when the results come out. Let's see. Um, Christine, you have your hand up for that. Yeah, the high schools were released on Thursday. Middle school, there's no exact date, but it should be uh, early April. Okay. And pre K and 3K is probably going to be sometime in May. Okay. No exact dates yet. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. So it's unfindable information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it won't be posted because they haven't released the date yet. <laughs> That's something at least, yeah. I don't usually post date. I'll say in the early spring or something like that. I don't Recall ever well, seeing if, it follow, if it follows the high school pattern, what they did was they sent an email to parents last week saying it would be released Thursday after school. It didn't give a time. I think it was ultimately re released around 4.30. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Christine. Thanks for being here. Um, anybody else? Any new business? Anything to discuss? Questions, comments? Maybe we can put it this way. For the circuit okay, so then I guess we are at the end of our meeting. It is 9.35, and I would like to adjourn this meeting. It's 7.35. 7.35. Okay, it feels like 9.35. <laughs> it is 7.35. We're all used to these meetings ending. We've had a very long day. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, everyone. Have a wonderful everybody. evening. Good night. And Good night. thank you so much for being here. And see you um, maybe at Superintendent Alvarez's town hall tomorrow night. Thank you, Christine, for dropping that link in the chat. All right. Take care, everyone. And that just seems like.